Hey guys, it's Danny, and I am back popping in sharing another Facebook Live. This will be my last recipe of the year, so I wanted to make sure that you guys had it. It is a butternut squash and quinoa frittata that I am planning on making for Christmas breakfast and would be beautiful on any holiday table. So give it a try. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Enjoy. And we're live. Hey guys, it's Danny coming at you from a clean and delicious kitchen right before the holidays. And I wanted to share with you one of my favorite um, breakfast brunch recipes. Personally, whenever we do brunch for the holidays, I like to do frittatas. So today I am sharing with you a very holiday frittata. It's a butternut squash and quinoa frittata. It has a little bit of fresh rosemary, a little kiss of nutmeg, and um, some blue cheese. So we're gonna chat about all the ingredients as we go. But the beautiful thing about frittatas is they're, they're easy, they're great for a crowd, you can make them ahead, and you are getting you know high quality protein in your eggs or your egg whites, and then you can put in there basically anything you want. So I love to pack them with some vegetables and grains and call it a breakfast, holiday and breakfast morning. So as always, as you guys tune in, please come down to the comments below, say hello. I'm gonna pull up my page right now so I can see all of us and uh, see who's, who's cooking along with me. We have um, Haley from Chicago, Rachel from New Jersey. Merry Christmas, Rachel. Hey, Nikki. Um, Tiffany from Kentucky, Amanda. Hi, guys. Cindy from Seattle. Thank you for tuning in and um, letting me know where you're watching from and who's watching, because that makes it super fun. So let's talk frittata. So basically all frittata is, is like a um, quiche without the crust. And it's a quite a bit lighter as well. So I'm doing the butternut squash. Um, it has onions and quinoa, a little blue cheese, and rosemary. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to the stove and start cooking up the vegetables, and then I'll show you what we do with the eggs, because the veggies have to cook for a little bit. As a matter of fact, let me get out a cover for them. Okay, so I have a 10-inch skillet that I'm gonna heat up over um, a medium heat. Now, you could do a 10 or 12 inch skillet, guys, okay? Um, and it doesn't have to be, I have a before and after, so I have a finished product for you guys. The first one I made is over here. This is what your frittata is gonna look like when it's done. It's a little bit of black pepper and a little bit of um, rainbow quinoa that you're seeing speckles all, all over the top. Um, I love using the cast iron skillet, but I only have one. So I did one in the cast iron skillet, and then I'm gonna demonstrate the other one in a simple, um, hard anodized, non-stick skillet. So either skillet will work, 10 to 12 inches. I'm going with a 10. Then the first thing you're gonna do is get a little bit of oil into your pan. You're gonna wanna use about a tablespoon. This is like a heaping teaspoon. Um, and then if I have to, I'll add a little more later. Because you don't want, everything's gonna happen in this one pan, so we don't want anything to stick. First thing that's gonna go in there are my onions. So I've got one chopped onion. And you guys, do you guys know this trick? So whenever you're doing some home cooking, you always know that your pan is ready for whatever it is you're gonna be sauteing. You just take one piece of it and then go to the pan, ready me? And put it in there and see how it's just sitting like still in the pan? That means the oil is not hot enough. There, this guy's starting to come to life. So you want, as soon as your veggies or whatever is going in that pan first, you want it to start to sizzle because that sizzle is what lets you know that your pan is ready for you. So okay, now that they're dancing around the pan, I'm gonna add in my onions. Onions and a kiss of salt. I like to salt my onions right away because it gives them a head start, helps to pull off the liquid, and it helps to layer the flavors as we go. So I'm just gonna let these go for a couple minutes. Um, really, I just wanna get the raw edge off of them. And while I stir them, I'm gonna see which all is staying in down in the comments below. Is it snowing? Haley, it is not snowing here. Actually, it's like sunny and 45 degrees which is very warm for us this time of year. Um, Supriya from Glen Rock, what up lady? Jenna from New Hampshire, thanks for joining. Tammy from Montreal, Deborah, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to you too. Lisa Rudd, I see that you joined us. Okay guys, Denmark, Florida. We got, you know, people representing from all areas. Okay guys, so once you get the onions going, I kind of speed everything up for our Facebook Live, but if you were really gonna take your time with this, I would let those onions go for like five or eight minutes because what you wanna do is let them become um, translucent, and even if you get a little color on them, because that's gonna make them 
even sweeter, which is gonna like bring a deeper level of flavor to the frittata. So once you've got that in the pan, then the next thing that I'm gonna add to my pan is three cups of diced up butternut squash. Now you can go one of two ways, guys. You can get a butternut squash, peel it, seed it, dice it up yourself, or you can go to the store, buy the pre-cut butternut squash, and then just cut it into smaller pieces. So either one is gonna get you to the end game here. It's time or money, right? If you buy it pre-prepped, you're gonna have to do a little extra money. If you do it yourself, save some money, a little extra time. And of course, from a freshness standpoint, everything's always most delicious when you do it yourself, but busy time of year, busy people. Um, okay, next thing that's going into my pan, oh, we're gonna do a little bit, I know, I don't know. I'm gonna move everything over here, guys. Okay, boom to the boom. Um, and this and this, that's all we need. Okay, so to season this, I'm doing a little bit of fresh nutmeg. I don't know if you guys remember this from the, um, this guy's gotta get started. When they're really new, they're hard to, there it goes, see it in the pan? Um, I don't know if you remember from my Brussels sprouts video, but I love adding nutmeg this time of year to vegetable dishes because it really gives it that extra kind of, hmm, what is that flavor? It's nutty, it has a nice little depth of flavor to it, um, so I'm a big fan. Plus, to me, nutmeg tastes very holiday, so I like adding it. Um, then I also, we're gonna do a little bit of fresh chopped rosemary, okay? So this is going, you could also do a sage, um, you need to do a little thyme, but I like the rosemary and the butternut squash combo. So it's about a fresh chopped, about a teaspoon of fresh chopped rosemary. Okay, then we're gonna do a little salt and pepper, right? Layering as we go. And we're gonna toss this all around in the pan. I want everything to have a nice light coating from the coconut oil, and, and I want the onions and the squash to be mixed together just so everything is incorporated. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add a splash of water to this and I'm gonna kind of speed up the cooking by steaming it, okay? So what I do is you add a little bit of water into the pan and I'm gonna pop on a lid and we're gonna let this go for like five minutes or so. Really what we're looking is for that squash to become fork tender. So let me put a timer on so I don't forget. All right, and then let's do the eggs over here. Do you have a second to say some, hi, some people? Of course, always have a second, always have a second. Valerie, Merry Christmas to you as well. Can fresh herbs replace with dry herbs? Yes, whenever you're doing fresh, um, whenever you're doing fresh herbs to dry herbs, you always, whatever you do fresh, you're gonna do a third, okay, so let's put it this way. A tablespoon of fresh rosemary, you would use a teaspoon of dried, so it's three to one, okay? You're gonna use less dried because it's more concentrated flavor. So um, I only use about a teaspoon of fresh rosemary, so you would only need like a quarter of a teaspoon of dried rosemary. You know, maybe even a, a little bit more, but you don't need a lot. Um, Kate, some weeks, da, 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 what I need, little grater. I know, Kate, I agree, that grater, I love it for my, and I really, it's only really just for my nutmeg. I'm very committed to nutmeg, so it's got its own grater in my house. Um, da, 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 what kind of pans do you recommend? Okay, I am, let's get started on the eggs and I'll answer this, okay? Okay, guys, so in total, we need eight eggs. I, when I do eggs and frittatas, I'm a big fan of cutting the eggs in the egg whites, which reminds me, I didn't get my egg whites out of the fridge. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for this recipe is five whole eggs and then six egg whites, which is about a half a cup plus two tablespoons of whites. Now, just for the record, if you don't, if you're not into egg whites, just do eight whole eggs. On the flip side, you could turn the whole thing into egg whites, right? You just double the amount of eggs. So you need 16 egg whites, okay? So the reason I like to do this is I just think it's just, it doesn't, I like the flavor. It makes it a little bit lighter. And then when I'm adding the cheese, I feel like it creates a nice balance. Okay, the other thing I want to note are these gorgeous eggs. Now, in the last couple videos I did, I, I you know, we partnered with Butcher Box, and I've been talking about grass-fed meats and pastured meats. Well, these are from the grocery store, but it's a pastured egg. Guys, if you've never bought pastured eggs before, you really have got to note the difference in the color of the yolk. When the eggs, when these, when the um, chickens are eating their natural diet, 
you know, of grass and bugs. Um, the color of the egg yolk is so rich and so vibrant and it's so creamy. So if you've never experimented with it, let's just put the health benefits aside for a second. Insanely delicious. So we've got five eggs and now I'm putting in six egg whites. So it's a total of eight eggs. And then we're gonna whisk, no, first let's add half a cup of milk, any kind of milk you like works. I'm using a 2% grass-fed milk. Um, I'm big on that. I'm big on the organic and the grass-fed and the pasture when it comes to meat and dairy. And whisk that all together. Kate Doyle joined. Hello, Kate Doyle. Thanks for joining in. Okay, so in this pan, we've got our eggs, our egg whites, and my milk. And I'm gonna also season this with some salt and pepper because you really want to season the um, layers as you go. So let's go back to the pans for one second. Okay, I've recently become obsessed with cast iron skillets. I'm sure I'll be talking about them more in 2017. I only have one. It's the Lodge brand from Target. It's like a $20 pan, and I've been obsessed with it. I made my first frittata in it, which I'll show you guys. Um, but since I didn't have two, the second one I'm using um, a regular pan. So that's a brand that I like. They do the hard anodized. They're called Green Pan. And then I also like the Cuisinart pans. So I have those as well. Um, so I really, uh, in 2017, I'm going to put together like a top 10 kitchen tool list for you guys because I know a lot of people want it narrowed down. And I definitely have my favorites. So I need to sit down and really think about that. Okay, so we have our eggs in the pan. What else has to happen? See, this is really all we have to do. And I cooked ahead. I cooked, it's called rainbow quinoa. I mean, it's really just red and ivory quinoa mixed together. The seeds are mixed together in one bag, so you get the combination of the colors. When you're cooking quinoa, you're gonna go two to one. So it's one part quinoa, two parts water. You cook it just like you would rice. You put everything in the pan, bring it up to a boil, pop on a lid, reduce it down to a simmer, boom. As soon as this little, what do they call this thing? See this little, do you see these little squigglies? The germ, I think that's the germ. Once it pops and you see it kind of hugging the quinoa, that's usually how you know your quinoa is done. Okay, so let's take it back over to the stove. Guys, are any of you guys cooking for Christmas morning or for Hanukkah? Anybody doing breakfast or dinner? If so, come on down to the comments below and let me know what you're making. Okay, let's take a look, see? I'm gonna turn the heat down. Move it around the pan. Okay, this is looking good. This looks really good, actually. And how good does it smell, cameraman? Good, really good. Ama what he means to say is amazing. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm gonna just test it. Perfect. Hot, but perfect. So what you want it to be, guys, is basically fork tender, but not super soft, because it's still gonna continue to cook in the pan and in the oven. Okay, so here we've got the that. What I do next is I take that quinoa, I'm gonna sprinkle the quinoa into the pan, and then again, we're gonna mix everything together. Okay, so now we've got onions, we have quinoa, we have the butternut squash. If you really wanted to get crazy, you could do like a little kale, but less is more, less is more. Okay, and the other thing you could do if you didn't have butternut squash, you could use the sweet potatoes. That would be really good too. So once you've got everything in the pan like I do here and it's evenly distributed, then you're ready for your eggs. So you flatten it down to make it like a little pot. Right, so I just kind of mush it all down. You just kind of flatten it, just make sure it's even. It's all gonna get, move around once the eggs get poured in there too. But this is a really good, it's, as you can see, it has a lot of filling into it. It's gonna be very hearty and delicious. So then I take that egg combination, um, I'm gonna pour it right over the top. Oh, hello, beautiful. You look delicious. And this is how we finish it off. Give it a little wiggly. Make sure everybody's moving along in there. Let the eggs get in there. I can see that the, I just want them to sink in a little. There we go. It's already cooking a little bit, huh? Yeah, and so you'll see the edges start to cook. That's just because the pan is hot. That's totally fine. And then the last thing I add is fresh crumbled blue cheese. Butternut squash, 
rosemary and blue cheese, they really like each other and my mouth really likes the three of them. So I like to finish it with a little blue cheese over the top. If you don't want to do any cheese, you could totally skip this. You could also do like a, um, a Parmesan cheese. You could do a Gorgonzola cheese. So it's not like it has to be the blue cheese. I just love this combination. The other thing I love about che blue cheese is that a little goes a long way. So I'm only gonna add about a quarter cup over the top of this. And it's got such strong, rich flavor that you don't need a ton of it. My last chip when it comes to cheese. Okay guys, so you know you can go to the store and you can buy like feta cheese crumbles or blue cheese crumbles in those containers. If and when possible, do not buy the pre-crumbles. Always buy it in a block like this because it, it, this is just pure cheese. It doesn't have any fillers or any anti-caking agents. So much better flavor, so much creamier. You get much more for your money and for your mouth when you buy it this way. So when possible, try to avoid the pre-crumbles. Buy it like this and just crumble it yourself. And then what I do is I just crumble it right over the top. And don't go too small with your crumbles because A, it's beautiful when they're big, and B, it's delicious. Okay, so that is that. Now, what I'm gonna do from here, no lid, you don't wanna put a lid on it. The whole thing goes into a 40, to, a 40. The whole thing goes into a 400 degree oven for um, 15 to 20 minutes. Basically, you just want it to be set through the middle, okay? So that's that. My oven's not on yet, so I'm not gonna do it. But when it's done, here's what's gonna happen. Let's go back to the island. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. The most beautiful thing happens. This is not anymore. Okay. Voila, Lita. Can you see this gorgeousness? And you can see how it pulls away. Can you see how it pulls away? This is cooled down. How it pulled away from the pan. So that's a good thing, because you know it's ready to cut and it'll come out pretty easily. Um, Morgan, you absolutely can use feta. I have, Jenna says she has the same cast iron pan. Love it, except for the fact that every time I make eggs in it, it sticks to the bottom. Making is really nearly impossible to flip. Jenna, ask, let me ask you, what kind of eggs are you making? Are you just like making scrambled eggs and over easy eggs? Because honestly speaking, I don't use this pan to do eggs like that. So tell me what kind of eggs you're making. Um, I think when you're, I'm just gonna chat about eggs. I think when you're making eggs, usually the best kind of pan to use is a pan like this, a little bit smaller. Because it, those are the kind of pans that the, the eggs aren't gonna stick to. And I don't care what your pan says about need, being non-stick, when making eggs, you will always need a little bit of extra fat. So maybe that's another thing. You have to add something, no matter what the pan says, I don't care what the box says, I don't care what the instructions say, you need a little bit of fat. She's actually flipping it in a cast iron. He's strong, Shana. What was she just flipping it? Over easy. My mouth, okay, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the thing. It's over easy in a cast iron skillet. Are you putting, you gotta really, you gotta butter it up. That's the thing, you need oil. So, okay, let's cut this and take a look at it. And maybe test it before the process. Okay, guys. All right, let's cut into this. I like to cut it like you're doing a pie. Go all the way across. I feel like this makes even pieces. So you kind of make your quadrants and then you go across again. So you can get eight to six pieces out of this depending on how big of a slice you would like to enjoy for yourself. If it's a part of a brunch, I find like you could really get eight because usually there's a lot of other things going on at the table. Okay, so look at how yummy this looks. Okay, so you've got the butternut squash, the feta, or not the feta, the blue cheese, the quinoa, um, if you wanted, you could do a little bit of garlic in there. But this is my personal favorite kind of brunch breakfast. Okay, let's give it a, I know, do the TV bite. Here we go. I just can't resist. Mm. 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 It's the rosemary with the butternut squash. The quinoa, really all the quinoa does, is it adds like this great texture. It's like a little bite and a little pop to it. Guys, I'm telling you this, make a beautiful addition to any holiday table. And if presentation is your thing, I say go with the cast iron skillet because it really looks, doesn't it look beautiful in the cast iron skillet? It looks so rustic and homemade. Okay, Morgan, thank you for catching, for jumping on live when you have a chance. You're on holiday break, no teaching kiddos today. Aw, and thank you for teaching kiddos. Anybody, any teacher in this world, <laughs> thank you. I know, I got little ones. 
I go in their classroom sometimes. You teachers are amazing. Okay, guys, so this is um, what I have got for you today. I really encourage you, if you're looking for a brunch recipe, give this one a try. It would be a beautiful addition to any holiday table. If we do not chat or connect before this holiday weekend, I wish you all the happiest of holidays, whatever it is that you celebrate. I'm super excited for what's to come in 2017, um, and I look forward to the new year, but not before I enjoy the holidays. So thanks for tuning in. I will see you back here soon. Um, you answer questions. Oh yeah, I can answer. Are there questions coming in? Please show us how to make some healthy chocolate cookies. Um, oh my God, all right. Let me just answer these two questions. Poonam, um, I recently put up um, the chocolate peppermint cookies with white chocolate chips, but if you use that, take that base recipe, take out the white chips, take out the peppermint, add in chocolate chips, you will have yourself the most delicious double chocolate cookie that happens to be free of refined sugars and white flour as well. Um, Sagi, can you do a healthy donut recipe or video um, for Hanukkah? It's so funny that you asked that because my daughter, we, I just bought a donut pan. My daughter wants to make donuts for tomorrow for us for Christmas Eve. So we are gonna be venturing into donuts, but I'm curious, for Hanukkah, are there any ingredients that you need to be eliminated or added? Curious, put it in the descriptions below. Um, Valerie's gonna make this for Christmas. Awesome, enjoy it. Hi, Diana, Erica, Joy, Merry Christmas. I'm sorry for your recipes, please, please, please. Okay, guys, I promise I'm reading, I'm listening, and I'm gonna do my best to get to all of it in 2017. Have yourselves a beautiful holiday, happy and healthy, and I'll see you back here soon. Cheers, guys.